From 284 to 44 BCE, the Romans viewed married life and their children as a high priority. Family life is what helped drive Roman society. Even social status was not of more concern than a family. Remaining single and childless represented social failure for both women and men. Mar women married young through arrangements so they could have as many children as possible. Social pressure to bear numerous children also created many health hazards for women. The wealthy would adopt unwanted children, for instance. One North African man supported 300 boys and 300 girls each year until they grew up. Authority was based on the belief that some people were by nature superior to others and that society had to be hierarchical to be just. This was determined by family history and by wealth. Men had control over the family's land, finances, their wives, and whether or not an infant could live. Life from 753 to 44 BCE was the Patron clan system, which was an interlocking network of personal relationships that obligated people to one another. The family was still the base of Roman life. Both men and women taught their children the values of ownership. Children values and ownership. The father, by law, owned everything, which they called the patria protesto or father's power. Most children received their education at home because there were no public schools. The rich were the only ones who could pay for private teachers for their children. Educators would sometimes physically harm a student if they did not answer a question correctly. The rich had the most power in Roman life. The rich paid less in rent and would have piped in water. Men would spend money on furthering their political careers. The poor had to live in single-room apartments that were rented by the day. They did not get water in the apartment. Most people in the apartments used public bathrooms or a pot for a toilet in their apartment. Sanitation was a problem in the city due to some tenants throwing the waste out the windows. Apartments were not very safe either. They were built poorly and would often collapse. Ventilation was poor, which would cause fires due to burning oil lamps inside the apartment. Many poor lost their farms in the 2nd century BCE. Farmland was scarce, possibly due to the rich taking the land to build up their estates. Many became homeless and relocated to Rome to become laborers. The women who were poor would have to become prostitutes to survive. The poor women were also shop owners and weavers. The rich, not only stealing the land from the poor, would focus on their political and financial gain. Romans gave citizenship to slaves. Slave, slaves' descendants could be members of the social elite if they were lucky enough to become wealthy. The lives of the slaves depended on where they lived and what they did, such as in agriculture or manufacturing. These types of places would sometimes be grueling work for the slaves. Roman law made a legal distinction between patri patricians and plebeians. The so-called better people were senators, equites, decrusions, and retired army veterans. Everybody else, except slaves, made up the group of the so-called humble people. There were customs of public baths that were used in Rome. This unknowingly contributed to the spread of disease. Women and men would bathe separately from one another. Citizens from most classes could afford to bathe daily. The bathers would move through a series of rooms that would increase in warmth and humidity. The bathers could swim naked in cold or hot pools. They would, they would do the bath in a specific order. First, they started at the apodyterium to undress. After that, they would move to the palest palestria where they could exercise and have their bodies oiled before the bath. Once done there, they would go to the frigidarium or edarium, or cold room, and then the the tepidarium or warm room. The final room was the cal caldarium or steam room, which would sometimes have a hot bath or a lab room. Once done with that, the slaves the the slaves would scrape the oil off of them and they would visit the rooms 
in the opposite order, ending up in the first room, the Apodeuterium. Diocletian and Constantine changed the empire. For instance, Diocletian caused a burden of financial and social status to everyone. Prices on products rose due to civil wars, and in 301 BCE, Diocletian imposed a harsh price and wage controls in the worsted areas, which, of course, course, caused the people to blame the high costs on the government. Constantine changed from a system of control and divide the empire into four territories. This made a difference on how people lived from all so social organizations. The battles between his sons did not help with how life was lived. Constantine converted to Christianity and changed how religion was. He didn't make polytheism illegal, so citizens could still worship their, their gods and goddesses. Constantine caused social and cultural change with bringing in barbarians. They based their traditions on Romans and lived side by side with them. Laws under Constantine were harsh. Military duty was hereditary, and as was a hereditary lifetime career. You were obligated to be in the military as a son of a military veteran. The social elite were obligated to serve as decretions or unsalaried members of their city senate. Many of the wealthy fled the cities to have the safety of the country when the government became ineffective. 